This doesn't look like a propeller. Not in the way we're used to. It spins sideways, more like a paddle wheel than anything you'd expect on a flying machine. But this strange, almost comical mechanism might hold the key to a quieter, more precise, and radically different way of flying. It's been used underwater for decades, silently pushing tugboats sideways with impossible grace. And now, it's being pulled into the sky. Cycloidal propulsion, a name most people have never heard, behind a concept that could reshape urban air travel. How did it begin? Why now? And is this the future of flight? Let's find out. Origins and Forgotten Attempts Long before drones buzzed overhead or startups promised flying taxis, a few eccentric engineers were already trying to break the rules of flight. In 1909, a Russian inventor named Nikolai Yegorovich Zhukovsky sketched out a flying machine powered not by spinning blades, but by rotating airfoils arranged in a loop. It didn't fly, but the seed was planted. In the decades that followed, inventors across Europe and America kept tinkering with similar ideas. One built a full-scale aircraft that looked like a farm harvester with wings. Another claimed his machine would flap through the air like a mechanical goose. That one ended in fraud charges. These early designs rarely worked, funding dried up, journals mocked the ideas, and slowly, cycloidal propulsion faded into obscurity. But that obscurity hid something interesting. Even when they failed, these machines moved differently. They didn't tilt or bank. They glided sideways, pivoted mid-air, and promised agility no fixed-wing aircraft could match. It would take another generation and an entirely different field for someone to finally make that motion useful. Not in the air, but in the water. The Voith Schneider breakthrough. The answer didn't come from the sky. It came from the sea. In the 1930s, Austrian engineer Ernst Schneider refined a rotating propulsion system for ships. It used vertical blades spinning in a circle, with each blade adjusting its angle in real time. The result was the Voith Schneider Propeller, or VSP, and it changed everything. Instead of pushing water backward like a conventional propeller, the VSP could push in any direction, sideways, diagonally, even rotating in place, without the ship turning at all. Tugboats outfitted with these systems could slip between tight docks or pivot on a dime. Ferries could maneuver with surgical precision, even in rough weather. World War II briefly interrupted its development, but the civil maritime industry quickly caught on. Ports and harbors saw the advantages immediately. These weren't just more efficient, they were safer, more controllable, ideal for delicate operations in crowded waterways. Over the decades, the technology has matured. Hydrodynamic tuning made them smoother. New alloys made them tougher. Control systems became more responsive and soon, the VSP wasn't just moving boats. It was used in dynamic positioning for cranes, in underwater turbines for power generation, and in research vessels where stability was mission critical. So if it worked so well in water, why not bring it back to the sky? From water to air, a radical transition. Taking something that thrives in water and making it fly sounds like a fantasy. But that's exactly what engineers are now trying to do with cycloidal propulsion. The logic is simple. If a spinning ring of blades can steer a tugboat sideways through a narrow dock, maybe it can help a flying machine hover, twist, and land with the same elegance. But the air doesn't play by the same rules as water. Air is thinner, less forgiving. Forces change faster. Vibrations build. Everything needs to be lighter, more precise, and far more responsive. It's not just about swapping the medium, it's about rewriting the playbook. Engineers had to rethink everything, from the materials used in the rotors to the algorithms that control the pitch of each moving blade. Unlike ships that operate with slow, steady motion, aircraft using cycloidal systems need to respond in milliseconds. Wind gusts, turbulence, and shifting loads can throw off balance in an instant. That challenge is exactly what makes the idea so enticing. Because if it works, it could solve one of aviation's biggest problems. Control. 
Helicopters rely on complex swash plates and tail rotors to stabilize their flight. Tilt rotors need to physically rotate their engines. But a cycloidal rotor can shift direction without moving the craft itself. That agility, true vectored thrust in any direction, opens the door to entirely new aircraft designs. Compact, precise, capable of weaving through dense urban landscapes or hovering silently in place. But none of that matters unless you understand how this strange mechanism works. So let's break it down. Now, first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. How Cycloidal Propellers Work At first glance, a cycloidal rotor looks like a science experiment gone wrong. A set of vertical airfoils spins in a circle connected to a rotating hub. But it's not the spinning that makes it special. It's what the blades do while they spin. Each airfoil isn't fixed. It pivots. And depending on where it is in the circle, it points in a different direction. This change in angle is what generates thrust. It's not just a spin, it's a dance. And the timing has to be perfect. Imagine four vertical blades circling clockwise. If you want the vehicle to rise straight up, the blade at the front might tilt outward, the one at the back inward, and the ones on the sides lie nearly flat to reduce drag. As the rotor spins, each blade shifts its angle mid-flight, adjusting to keep the thrust moving in the desired direction. Older systems achieved this with clever mechanical linkages, gears, and rods moving in perfect sync. But modern versions use servo motors, Tiny actuators control each blade independently, adjusting thousands of times per second based on sensor feedback. This level of control lets the aircraft push itself in any direction without tilting or changing its orientation. Forward, backward, sideways, and even rotation on the spot. Unlike traditional propellers, cycloidal blades all move at the same speed, avoiding the uneven lift and noisy turbulence caused by fast-spinning tips. That means less noise, smoother flight, and fewer aerodynamic surprises. It's elegant, complicated, and strangely beautiful to watch in action. But efficiency and maneuverability aren't the only reasons engineers are paying attention. There are other, subtler benefits that might just tip the balance. Why engineers are obsessed. It's not just the novelty that draws engineers in. It's what cycloidal rotors enable. In an age where urban air mobility is becoming a serious industry, every advantage matters. And cycloidal propulsion offers something rare, full control without the usual trade-offs. A conventional drone moves by tilting its body. It has to lean forward to go forward and tilt sideways to turn. That motion is fine in open spaces, but in cities with tight clearances and swaying winds, precision is everything. Cycloidal rotors can shift thrust instantly without altering the aircraft's orientation. That means smoother rides, tighter landings, and safer maneuvers around buildings or infrastructure. They're also quieter. With no fast whipping tips or large spinning disks, the noise signature is more subdued. For flying taxis or medical drones operating in populated areas, that matters. Nobody wants a sky filled with buzzing rotors. Then there's redundancy. Because thrust can be vector controlled from multiple rotors independently, cycloidal systems may offer better stability if something goes wrong mid-flight. Lose a rotor in a traditional quadcopter and you're spiraling. Lose one here and the system might just compensate. But there are reasons we don't see these everywhere yet. Cycloidal systems are heavier. The mechanisms are complex, with moving parts under constant stress. Precision means cost, and for now, energy efficiency still lags behind more conventional setups. Still, the potential is undeniable. And that brings us to the people betting big on making it real, starting with a company in Austria that's been quietly working on this for over 15 years. Enter Cyclotech. In a quiet lab in Austria, Cyclotech has been chasing this dream long before the world was talking about flying cars. Their approach isn't theoretical, it's mechanical, grounded, and impressively real. After years of development, their prototype, lightweight, carbon-framed, and fitted with four spinning cycloidal rotors, has already taken to the skies. 
The vehicle weighs just 83 kilograms. Nearly half of that is rotors alone. Each one spins at up to 3,100 RPM and can change thrust direction with remarkable speed. Indoors, they've flown tethered. Outdoors, they've flown freely with European aviation approval backing their tests. The design feels like something out of a near-future sci-fi sketchbook. There's no traditional propeller, no tilting wings, just four circular units spinning silently, giving the craft its own kind of logic. And the funding is as follows. In 2023, Cyclotech secured over $20 million to further develop the system. Still, they've shared little about flight times or how they plan to manage the growing weight of onboard batteries. The technology is working, the craft can fly. But the big question remains, does it solve a real problem or just do the same thing in a more complicated way? Is it really better? Cyclotech's design is undeniably bold, but it's not alone. The Jetson One, a lightweight craft using conventional parts, is already flying. It carries a pilot, stays airborne for 20 minutes, and doesn't rely on exotic engineering. So why pursue cycloidal propulsion? Maybe it's the unmatched maneuverability. Maybe the quieter operation in city airspace. Or maybe it's about control, true precision in crowded skies where every move counts. But ambition alone isn't enough. Cyclorotors still need to prove they're worth the complexity. Yet there's something poetic here. A forgotten concept, spinning blades that push sideways, is being reimagined. Not to mimic what already works, but to explore what might work better. This might just be its moment.